desert. As the rains fail year after year, the Sahara is taking over, wiping out trees, livestock, crops, and soon, people. Survival has never been easy on this frontier of human existence, where village life hasn't changed for centuries. In Upper Volta, the most sophisticated transport is donkey power. And the bicycle is a status symbol where there is even a rudimentary road. Water shortages have worsened over the years and drought walks hand in hand with starvation and disease. Malaria, chest infections and tuberculosis cases fill the wards. In the Gambia there are just three hospitals, other patients queue for treatment at clinics and outpatients departments. More and more people are turning to save the children, not only for medicine but for help with all their problems. Help from people they know and trust. Improved mother and baby care means some youngsters get a better start in life, while their older brothers and sisters are taught basic health care. Education is a priority for everyone. Slowly word is spreading that family planning, hygiene and simple cures are available to all. But there's no cure for drought. The effects of a 10-year cycle of failed rains spread relentlessly. Parts of the Gambia at least have water, with a river running the length of the country. It's an important source of food. Impoverished villagers spend all day for a catch too small to sell. These fish must feed a family of 16. Fish from the sea does find a market, and the industry centers on shanty towns on the beaches. Exports of fish products have increased tenfold in the past decade. The fishing grounds are vital in a country of few natural resources, where barter and exchange are more common than currency. Here, in the capital Banjul at least, there is enough food to go round. The Gambia's economy is based on just one crop, peanuts. Grown by peasant farmers, they account for almost all export earnings. The two processing factories work 24 hours a day, providing some jobs at least. But such industry doesn't mean prosperity. These women won't eat today unless they can find a few nuts among the waste shells and the dust. The country's future wealth depends on tourism, up by 20% last year. Long empty beaches attract visitors looking for guaranteed winter sunshine, and plans to add to tourist facilities are underway. The government is also active in improving health care, Last year, they invited Save the Children to work with existing facilities, bringing them up to standard, then leaving local staff to run them. Before seeing Save the Children's work at first hand, Princess Anne joined in the Gambia's Independence Day celebrations. After the formalities of the Independence Day ceremonies, we took to the river. We did have a slight problem with the lowered level of the river by coming in sharp contact with a rock, which bent a rather vital piece of equipment. But fortunately, they managed to repair it in time for us to have a night going up the river, which is quite the most comfortable form of getting up country in the Gambia. This boat, in fact, is British built and British supplied and relatively new. And this particular boat is really the only major connection between the capital, Banjul, and virtually the length of the country. Although that changes according to how much water there is in the river because it gets quite low anyway about this time of year and is difficult to navigate. And in this year, it's become difficult that much earlier this was where the 
work of the Save the Children Fund really started. These wells were both sunk specifically for this garden. And as you can see, it looks very green and very healthy. As far as I could see from, from that particular well, it was deep enough that it would probably last quite a long time. But there is always a danger. If you go down deep enough, then you generally lower the water table. Women do a lot of the agricultural work. It's an incentive from their point of view to be able to produce something that they can also sell. But a lot of it is just basic nutrition. A bit of variety and will do them and their children that much more good. And of course, if they can grow it and sell it on, then it affects the whole of the community around about them. The ram that appeared bleating rather sort of pathetically, with very good reason, I suspect, was a gift to me, which is one of those things that you could generally do without. And I did suggest to, to the village chief that wouldn't it be a frankly good idea if they killed it and had it there and had a party after I'd gone. But unfortunately, he didn't, um, didn't take the hint. And from what I gather, it did join the convoy for a while, but I'm afraid history doesn't relate where it went to thereafter. This village has its own village health worker who is trained by the Save the Children Fund and who is supplied with the drugs. Villagers from miles around come, come to visit him and if they're too serious, he then refers them on to the community health worker. <laughs> the Gambia revolves round its river. Crossing it is quite a hazard. There's a leprosy hospital just outside Bansang. Not too many residents, in fact, because a lot more lepers are, in fact, cared for in their own communities nowadays. Leprosy on the whole, this type of leprosy, is not contagious, and they only get cared for when, as in, in this gentleman's case, basically they've lost limbs and, and can't really cope anymore themselves. They have very good drugs to fight leprosy now and help, but this lady, in fact, has been on the drugs for long enough that they're now ceasing to have an effect. She's really become immune to them. So, water to help us in West Africa. Give us help in West Africa. They're thinking of us, you see? They've got sympathetic feeling for us, and they have put us in remembrance, and they are praying for us all. And now Princess Anne has come here to meet you. Yes, to meet me. And I was so glad. And I was praying for her, always. Always before she comes, I was praying for her. And God will bless her. God will prolong her days, strengthen her, and give her happiness, long life, and prosperity. <laughs> This is an unexpected welcome in Basse. Uh, certainly unexpected to the local gendarmes and the police who didn't quite know how to cope with them. I mean, it was marvellous to see so many people, but whether in fact, in, you know, the fact that they had, there was a visitor, some of them, I'm sure, had no idea who the visitor was, but they'd come to have a look anyway and they may still have no idea who that visitor was.
very indicative of the fact that the, the Gambia was feeling a shortage of water, which it seldom feels. So although they perhaps aren't so short of water that uh, other places are, it, it affects them more because they, they're so used to having it and they're not very good at living without it. This is the clinic in, in Basse, which we have a Save the Children Fund doctor and she has a helper. And it's a small hospital, really small cottage hospital. Terrific amount of mother and child care, which is the fund's main occupation, really. It gets involved with other things because it has to. Malaria, and tuberculosis, probably. Malaria at certain times of the year and the rains is particularly prevalent. Tuberculosis when it gets cooler in the winter, which it does, believe it or not. Burns cases, always a danger in those types of villages, and particularly when it gets cooler in the winter. Um, more fires. It's a harsh place to live at the best of times, and their expectations are never very great. And I think they have a, an ability, a temperamental ability, to cope in some extraordinary way. So another village health worker in a different village. That is a water pot. And actually, he described it, I thought, exceedingly eloquently as a Gambian fridge, because it's double-sided. It has an inside and an outside. It keeps the, most of the heat out. Princess Anne flew to Upper Volta, one of the poorest countries in the world, brought to its knees by drought. Wandering herdsmen must drive their animals further south each day looking for water. Where it still exists, all must share. Help will come through a new organisation called Sahel 84, which will coordinate the money and aid from many charities and agencies. This watering hole used to fill the entire plain, but even this muddy puddle will be gone soon. Having trekked miles to reach it, the herds must move on. In a few months, even this precious pasture will be dry dust. Raising money is only half the battle. Getting help to where it's needed in such a hostile environment is the real challenge, as the few roads that do exist get rougher every day. A very unusual sight in Gorum Gorum. They'd never seen a fire engine there before. For the benefit, admittedly, of the Queen's flight. But it made life much easier, and it, it also enabled me to visit the Sahel region, which otherwise would have been a very, very long trip in a car. This, of course, is a French-speaking country, and uh, from now on, it was very much exercising the brain to remember all the French that one had learned, and quite a lot that one hadn't. dusty place. It's pure sand, really. The roads don't last long. Um, very difficult place to build because when the rains do come, it's torrential, basically, and it runs off almost at once um, and can shift a surprising amount of dirt. This hospital in Gorum Gorum was one of the first places that the Save the Children Fund worked in. In fact, they established the mother and child clinic and built up the hospital the nutrition unit themselves and trained the personnel who now work there. But they were left without a doctor for some four months and the uh, Voltaic trained personnel, the fund had trained, ran the hospital on their own for four months, which I think says a lot for 
what they'd learned. Getting mothers and children into these hospitals and clinics, of course, is half the battle. Children are very badly off. Malnutrition is more now than I think it's ever been. When they've been weaned is their moment of greatest risk. And the nutrition unit works all the time. There was one slight uh, hiccup in the training system that the voltaic nurse that does the nutrition unit will insist on giving everybody, irrespective of their size, the same amounts, because she doesn't think it's fair to give smaller amounts to them. The hospital that now has a voltaic doctor, and he's recently qualified, and they have the basics, those uh, curious containers contain specimens from various parts of the region. And this is a centrifuge which works very well. Of course, there is basically no power. Um, occasionally, you get power at some times of the day, electric power, and very little in the way of um, virtually no pipe water. It isn't an arbitrary decision where you set up your clinics. You try and set it up on a geographical basis so that you can serve a number of villages, that they will be within reach. And their drugs are supplied through, in this instance, an exceedingly efficient pharmacy run by Voltaic, who decided that this was where he was going to work from. It is a general difficulty, again, with all those parts of the world, that medicines aren't taken as they're supposed to be. That's why it's very important to keep the whole thing as simple as you can. This lady was a traditional birth attendant, and she was showing me her box of tricks, and it was like a little small exam. She got it all right. And this is the sort of local equivalent to your hamburger joint, really. It's uh, 25 francs a, a throw, and this is what most people have as a lunchtime snack. Transport in Upper Volta is basically four-legged. And if you've graduated to a bicycle, you're probably doing well. This part of the world never really looks green and lush. The conditions are the same as they should be, or would normally be in May, which would be just before the rain. So they have another three months to go before they would expect any rain. And the country is in the condition it would normally be in in May. So that shows you they've not got much to look forward to for the moment. The Land Rover is a bonus when it gets wet because that's when they have real problems getting about in the country. If and when it does start to rain, movement is virtually impossible, particularly in, in heavy transport. The life expectancy in any of these parts of the world fluctuates, but particularly in a drought. I would imagine that the life expectancy might well drop for the next six months or so. The Muslim faith is, is the largest one, but equally there are an awful lot of tribes and villages who have their own system. Thank you.
Seba is a very isolated village and one of the few places where people can go to get any form of treatment. There is a lot of eye infection because there's a terrific amount of dust and, and at this time of year too there's a lot of wind and it gets everywhere. Looks a bit rough the treatment but I, it's better than nothing I think is the answer to that. <laughs> Of course, in Upper Volta too, they, they have river blindness amongst other things. Children are very adaptable and quite tough, really. There are schools um, after the first two years in a local language, because that again is a problem. It's basically French education. And they start learning French after two years and, and carry on in French thereafter. And particularly in Muslim orientated countries. It would be particularly encouraging to see so many girls going to school. <laughs> This garden is um, entirely the responsibility of the school children. They do all the, the care and attention to this rather remarkable garden and sell it to the villagers and, and people around. The fund workers do nutrition classes from almost the word go. I was impressed by the, the standard of the workers who have been trained and of the doctors who are going back to that area, I think they'll cope very well. So much of the values we have are, are relative. I think anybody who goes to these areas for voluntary agencies or any type of work, being shocked is something that you should have long since grown out of. You have to be able to accept what you find and then find a level at, at which you can help. And that's important, it has to be the the right level, it has to be at a level that the people you're working with can understand and cope with when you've gone. <laughs>